I'm going to introduce my second guest. It is Dr. Siobhan Parr from the National Museum of Ireland. Good morning, Dr. Siobhan Parr. How are you? And welcome to Near FM this morning. Thank you very much, Myra. I'll just say one little thing. I'm actually from Geological Survey Ireland, but it's ah. a co-production between Geological Survey Ireland and the National Museum of Ireland. So this new exhibition that we have, Down to Earth, Exploring Ireland's Geology, is a co-production. It's to celebrate the Geological Survey of Ireland being 175 years old, and then it also shows off some of the collections, the, na- the, the, the National Mineral and Fossil Collection that, uh, that we have at the National Museum. So sorry about, about, about that. No, 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 no. I mean, it, they're both... <laughs> both amazing organisations so um, and uh, we're very honoured here in Air FM to have you here this morning um, but this, the new exhibition it's called uh, Down to Earth isn't it? Yes Down to Earth and then as a subtitle Exploring Ireland's Geology so it's a, it's a celebration of Ireland's geology the oldest part of Ireland is 1.8 billion years old so the Earth is 4.6 billion years old but the oldest part of Ireland it's an island off, off Donegal. That's the oldest part. And over in the last 100 or 1.8 billion years, Ireland has been assembled. And all the different parts, the different parts of Ireland are different ages and have been through different geological histories. But uh, this exhibition celebrates some of that. We don't. Uh, it celebrates the diversity of geology in Ireland. For an island of our size we happen to have very exciting geology because we've been on the edge of great stories over our 1.8 billion years. But it also then celebrates or, or, or um, marks the different work that, types of work that Ge- Geological Survey Ireland is doing. So you might, I suppose people might think of geologists in terms of walking the fields or they might ter- think of them in terms of uh, the exploration for oil and gas and for minerals. And that is part of it, or, or was part of it. We don't do so much of the oil and gas anymore, very little of it, in fact. Um, but we continue to map, and we continue to, to map Ireland for the people of Ireland, and in very different ways. So whereas it was that we'd be out walking, in, walking the fields, using the Ordnance Survey maps, uh, using our hammer and compass and, and hand lens, and all students still learn how to do that, we now use drones. We now use uh, geophysical equipment mounted on a plane. We take soil samples and look at geochemistry. And a very uh, big part of our work in the survey is the seabed mapping. So for Ah. Ireland, yes, the seabed mapping. Because for Ireland, uh, our our total territory, so the the sea territory, the marine territory, is 10 times the size of our land territory. That's a very large amount of of area of the seabed that we need to map and there's this project called Inframar which is a co or a joint project between us Geological Survey Ireland and the Marine Institute and it's funded by our home department so Geological Survey Ireland is a division of the Department of of the Environment Climate and Communications but it's funded by that and so we've been mapping the seabed for about 20 years now and hope to have uh, this round of it completed in, in the next five or six years. But that means that we'll have a much greater understanding of our seabed. And as uh, as is often said, we know more about other planets than we do about our own marine, t- our own seabed. This, and when I say we, I mean the whole of the world. Uh, it, we don't know our sea, our marine territory very, very well. But Ireland is now ahead on on mapping it. That's extraordinary, Siobhan. I, I have to say that, um, uh, I, and I assume, maybe I'm wrong, that Ireland are, is the country on a shelf. I mean, when you go further out, let's say into the Atlantic, does it get deeper? Or, and is uh, our, Oh, oh. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Well, we're on a shelf, and that's why we have so much territory, marine territory, because the territory is defined according to the continental shelf. So Ireland sits on this, now, Pat plate, we're in, the, in, in on a tectonic plate. Um, the, 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 
the continental shelf we're sitting on, where it goes quite a distance out. People might have pl- heard of places like Rock Hall and and things like that. So we're, there's quite a distance out, especially to the northwest where it's the shelf before it drops off and becomes the the abyssal plain, the the the, the ah, very deep ocean. So yes. that's why Ireland has such a, a big territory because uh, the marine territory is defined according to the shelf, and we're sitting on uh, this very large shelf. So Sh- Siobhan, am I? I mean, is the ship or, or ships? I don't know about this. Does it go <laughs> out from Galway or the? West? I mean, I'm assuming that it goes out from the west coast of Ireland. I'm not too sure about the east coast, but because uh, the sea is, is is massive, so is that where where it's leaving? And does it do? Does it go to? I assume it goes to different areas. But are you picking up samples? Uh, and, and can you do that from great depths? You can. We do, so there's a mixture. That's so. It's it's a the project is jointly run and managed by us, Geological Survey, and we've a fleet of seven, not very large research vessels, and so we do the clo- the work close to to Ireland. So all around, so all our east, south, and and west coast. So we do the work and out. To, so on the east side, we go to the UK border, the UK sea border. Uh, and we work from the south and we work the, the in around the bays, we work around the islands, so we work close what's close to, to the to the land. And the Marine Institute who have, have the very large ships, they can go on long missions, long research uh, uh trips and they do the further out uh work. So that they map the, the big, big area that's further off to the to the west. So that's how we manage it. It's a mix between the two the two um, organisations. But yes, we take data, so we image the seabed and we get an understanding of oh. the depth. And uh, something that has come out of that is we are imaging the shipwrecks. So we've quite a lot of Oh my goodness! Uh, yes, yes. Um, because we're imaging the surface anyway, and we do that so we get an understanding of the geology, but also we get an understanding of the topography, so where you've got highs and lows, but also the sediments that are on the seabed get moved around with currents. Uh, so it's good to understand how over time the the currents in the in the, the water will move um, sediments around. So that that's important to know. But yes, as part of the imaging we've been able to image the shipwrecks around our coast. Uh, some of them we image over and over again, for example, the Lusitania. Ah, so yes, we we yes. can see it, mm-hmm. uh, we can see it change over, over time, but we've, we've good images now of lots of the shipwrecks and uh, our, some of our colleagues here in Geological Survey Ireland and, and uh, with the underwater um, archeology span unit have produced books. There's one, purely on the Lusitania and there's another one that's on the variety of different uh, shipwrecks around our, our coasts. But it's a very interesting part to the work that kind of came out of the big scientific work of mapping our seabed. This is a, a different uh, aspect to the story that, that we've been working on. Well, well I'm fast. I'm actually not too sure what question to ask, but I'm just wondering outside, you're talking about the Lusitania and of course the U boats in the First World War. So, is there a more concentrated area there of wrecks? I know you possibly can't see or, or find wood from the um, Spanish Armada. I know a lot of ships came around the West Coast there. Around, um, I want to ask so many questions. <laughs> I'm like a child in a sweet shop here. Um, is there a, 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 is it all over the west coast, or or, or from Donegal around, or um, is it just specifically there's a large number in one area? Well, this is where you discover that I'm not the expert in shipwrecks <laughs> because I, I I I'm a different type of geologist. Oh my goodness. I, um, my good friend and colleague Sharice McKeown, who looks after this aspect and has written the the uh, the books, I'm sure she'd be more than delighted to chat to you. Oh, on I'd a, love a to chat with her. Yes, because she really does know the various ones. They're spread around. There are some areas that there be higher concentrations, but there's there's a scattering all along our our sea, um, uh, uh, along our coasts. 
But yes, I think there is some from the, the Spanish Armada. There's some evidence of that. A lot from World War Two, and then various other uh, vessels that went down, unrelated to battles, unrelated to war, oh, yes. but uh, that, that have gone down at various times. But um, yes, I, I'm afraid I'm not the best. No. I don't have the details, <laughs> no. but I, I can definitely t- point you in the direction of somebody who could. I would love that. But can I just ask you, though, that you you came back, you started uh, talking about using drones. So we'll go back onto onto uh, the mainland. But just before that, have, has there been massive developments in the depths that cameras can go down or sensors now uh, in the maritime uh, research units? Well, it, yes, I, I, we, it's, it's like a sweep. We sweep with its sonar uh, oh. and we sweep, yes, we sweep and it, it returns the data. That will include everything that it sees. Uh, see, I'm using the word see, yes. but everything that it, it registers. Um, and that will include kelp near our coast. It will include all of the features because it's quite high resolution. So you'll see features geological features like faults or canyons or or any change in topography all that will be picked out but it will get the shipwrecks in quite detail as well so yes um, the resolution is improving all the time oh. and the amount of data that can be re- that is returned uh, for use uh, is is improving all the time well, can I, can I, I think that's amazing. Can I go back then onto the mainland Ireland and ask you, yes. you said oh, at the uh, at the very start that an island off Donegal is the oldest um, part of the Rock country. Rock of Ireland. Yes. yes. Now, are you trying, uh, maybe I'm getting my brain is trying to work here now. And I'm not that smart. Are you saying that two parts of probably uh, two massive uh, um, millions of years ago that two massive uh, shelves met each other and joined each other or something from from billions or millions of years ago yes we are saying that yes so ireland so the land we know the islands that we know is the shape that we know is is probably quite recent because it's a function of sea level uh, and so it wouldn't have been the island that we know now until <sighs> for the la- oh, it's only tens of thousands of years because it's related to the end of the ice, the end of the ice age, so kind of twelve, thirteen thousand years. So that's the shape we know. Sea level changes all the time and changed in after the ice had been removed. But yes, the long geological history of Ireland is that we started somewhere cl- uh, much closer to the South Pole. So we were were oh. a huge continent. Uh, the only bit of Ireland that really is from that time is this Innes Trochal of, of Donegal. This continent uh, split apart and we, we and started to form an ocean. Oceans open and close all the time. It's what, it's what happens. The Atlantic Ocean is, is opening at the moment. And so uh, all the activity is down the centre, and we know this from Iceland. Uh, but the Pacific is closing and we know this from you might know the term the the ring of fire the pacific rim, ring yes. of fire where you have um subduction under south america you've got plates moving uh to uh towards each other you've got all the volcanic activity in in japan so that's what happens when a uh, uh, an ocean is closing. So but to go back to Ireland, we've seen all this in the past. So we've seen an ocean open. Uh, so then Ireland, or the bits of Ireland that existed then, were on two different continents. And the bits of Ireland that existed then are Connemara, North Mayo, Donegal, Tyrone, uh, Wexford. Those are the bits that existed then. Then this ocean started to close. And when the ocean was closing, you had all of the activity that we currently have in Japan, lots of volcanoes, tsunami, earthquakes. That's what was happening as an ocean was closing. And at this point, a lot of sediment was building up on the edges or the the coasts of these two uh, continents as they move closer together. I, by the way, I should tell you the name of the ocean. We call it now the Iapetus Ocean. Wow. Named, yes. named because in Greek mythology, Iapetus was the father of Atlantis, 
So this is the ocean that existed oh. before the Atlantic Ocean. So we call it the Iapetus Ocean. Wow. So then as it started to build up, we got places that are that came into existence would be um, Mayo, Sligo, uh, a, a lot of said between Longford and County Down, uh, other parts of Wexford and, and Wicklow and, and um, Waterford started to come into existence. And we were beginning to move north as well. So then as the, these two big continents finally collided, a bit like um, India colliding with Asia, so we would have had mountains as high as the Himalayas are now. All of so we were then connected. Are you serious? Oh my god! I am. Yeah, yeah. This, I, this is this is the history of Ireland, and it's a part of our history that we as geologists know well, and we're very comfortable talking about it. But we're fully aware that it's not in, you know, not a, very few people will know about this. But yes, I, so 450 million years ago, we were still in the Southern Hemisphere, but we were starting to move north. We were similar in activity to Japan, to what Japan is now. So then the, they finally closed and the sutures, so this line or this area where the two continents finally closed, it's from County Loud to the Shannon Estuary. It's not a straight line. It bends close to Longford, but it's a ne- almost like a, a stretched out S shape from uh, County Loud to the Shannon Estuary. And we had then, we were up in, we were as far north, but still in the Southern Hemisphere, as the deserts, where the deserts are, the mid latitude deserts. And so all the red sandstones that we have in Cork and Kerry, that's all red desert sandstone. And one aspect to that is it's taught, you, so I'll just st- say one separate thing. People t- in the past, anyway, used the local rock for building. So a lot of the buildings in Cork are red sandstone uh, because that's their local rock. And so that is the GAA colours. The <laughs> red of the GAA colours is because of all the red sandstone buildings in Cork. And then it's because... Uh, uh, because it was desert sandstone. So then we started to move into the tropics. And a lot of our rocks, we're talking about 330 million years ago now, a lot of our rocks are from the time of when we were in the tropics. So the middle of Ireland, so all the way from the Burn to Dublin City itself, um, and down to Kilkenny and up as far as uh, Fermanagh, that's all limestone. And the limestone was all formed uh, when we were in the tropics, about 300 to 330 million years ago. And limestone, it's coral reef, really. So we were covered at this time with, uh, periodically covered, sea levels changed a lot, uh, periodically covered in warm, shallow waters. And we had a lot of reef development. So think of the Bahamas. And that's Dublin from 300 million years ago. Oh so have goodness. you got that nice image in your head of the Bahamas? I, I do, because I'm I'm getting this picture in my head that uh, it's not a straight line by any means, but there is no. a line down the, from the top of Ireland, kind of swings whatever, like the Shannon, and one part is from one place, and yeah. the other part is from another, it came from another part uh, of the yes. planet. And yeah. I'm trying to get... Right. And then it's all <laughs> covered, or the middle part is all covered, with lovely limestone and so the Dublin city is limestone and to the south we have the the Dublin or the 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 Linster or the Wicklow granites and to the north of Dublin so Loch Shinney well no that is limestone too but to other oh. very other parts of the north of the city or north of the city to the north of the city are volcanics for all to do with this closing of this uh, this great ocean and, but we were so we were in the tropics about 300 million years ago, and we continued to move north, and we then moved in. You might have heard the term Pangaea, so that's when all of the continents of the Earth came together. Uh, so the rocks that we have from that time include the um, the uh, uh, the gypsum in Cavan, Monaghan area, and then in Northern Ireland we have quite a few rocks from that age. So this is the age of the dinosaurs. 
uh, we've got some rocks covered from that age and then later after that the North Atlantic started to open and that's where we have the volcanic rock that we have in the Cooley Peninsula in County Loud but most famously we have the Giant's Causeway so and the Morn Mountain so that's all they're all our young rocks they're only about 60 million years old and they're from the opening of the North Atlantic so Ireland has such a great geology because we happen to be at the this the opening and closing of the Iapetus Ocean and then we're again at the edge of the opening of the North Atlantic this is why we've such a uh, and we've moved from the southern hemisphere up to where we are now but all our landscape is glaciated so we about 2.6 million years ago so quite recently we started to get into this these this, these phases of ice ages and um, and warmer periods and that's this that's what we're in at the moment a warmer period and so our landscape because we were covered in ice quite a few times over the last 2.6 million years and so our landscape is covered it is all created by ice and you've got the valleys and the drumlands and eskers and one nice little point is Ireland is where a lot of this early work was done and so the Irish language has given the world some geological mm-hmm. terms so mm-hmm. drumlands and eskers are used all over the world but they come from the Irish language and that's quite a and nice that's wonderful. extra little point yeah Siobhan, I'm going to ask you something, two things. Uh, it's very seldom that I ever wish that I was young and, and starting out, but I do now and I want to cry. But anyway, let's just get about if I want to, if I was somebody young and uh, thinking of a career, where, uh, what university or where do they go? So for geology or it's, it's often called geoscience or earth science, it's really similar earth science often in, it will include other aspects of our science so the oceanography the atmospheric science uh, hydrology or hyd- which is the study of groundwater and that's a very important aspect for Ireland so various universities so Trinity has um, UCD Go- ah. UI Galway Cork they all have a course that ah, courses wonderful. that are somehow related it might not have geology in the title anymore but it would be geoscience or earth science geoscience. And, and it's possible to do it that way um, no, I, ha- I would also say interest via your the geography course for leave and search is a good place to, to, oh, to um, yeah. start to get a, a love of this but it's anybody can be a geologist in one sense yes we have a lot of technical training but geology is, is um, it's an observational science it's looking at what's outside your own door. Uh, even if you might not have the technical words, it is describing, this is how geology started. It's looking at the stone buildings that are around in your village or town or city. But mm-hmm. it's also looking at your landscape and wondering, well, how did that mountain form? Or why is that river flowing there? Or even looking at a river and, and saying, all oh, right, it, there's a bend in the river and it's cutting it's the water is flowing faster on one side of the ri- on the, than the other and it's cutting in at the bend and it's depositing its sediment on the other side of the, of the, the inside of the bend. So it's, it's looking around and it's something that any age can get quite interested in well, because I, it is I, all I, around us. Well, I have to say, well, two things. I, I'm absolutely fascinated with you, uh, Siobhan, and that's number one. Now, I just need, because our time is beginning to run out, and I really want you to come back. You talk about the exhibition. <laughs> I, I do, because it's up in Collins's barracks, and just to say to our listeners, you know, you can get the Lewis right up there. There is a car park uh, you have to pay for. But is it on at the moment? Yes, it's on at the moment. It'll run for about eighteen months, ah. but don't leave. It's best not to leave it. Do it All now. Right. Uh, you have to book, but that's purely a COVID. Yes. So we can manage the numbers. It's an, it is, it's free, of course, as are all the national museum sites. There are four national museum sites in Ireland: uh, the archaeology and the dead zoo. Although the dead, what we call the dead zoo, the the natural science, that's closed at the moment for renovation. But also the 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 site in Castlebar. They're all free, but you do need to book online, purely yeah. 
to manage the COVID numbers. If you look on the National Museum uh, website, you're booking for Collins Barracks. You're not booking specifically for this exhibition, so it's for Collins Barracks, but that means you can look through all of the exhibitions that are currently on in Collins Barracks. But yes, it's free. Uh, It's suitable for all ages. It's suitable for people to come for a little look around uh, or to really get in-depth detail information or our best thing is come quite a few times visited quite a few times one of some of the things we have there is a huge geological map of ireland on the floor so people can look at their own area they can spend time working out or what's the geology in their own area they've won we've one of we've a reconstruction of one of our research vessels that we talked about at the start of the interview and and you can really see the mapping happening uh, it, it's from the south coast um, we have information on our TELUS ex, uh, work now the TELUS, that's our plane with the geophysical um, equipment on board, people might remember the plane flying over and back uh, above their houses Yes. in the Dublin area the, the north east it would be a few years ago at, at it's this about point it's about four or five years ago I think it was yes, yes. yes. so that's, you'll see about that but one of the big aspects we have is uh, and the exhibition of all the minerals that are in our daily life. So mm. in your kitchen, everything you're... If, one of the sentences we have in the exhibition is, if it's not grown, it needs to come from the earth. And even the material, the, what, the food, what grows, is dependent on the soil that we have on the earth. So everything is from the earth. We live off the earth. We live on the earth. We live from the earth. So it's, it's uh, an exhibition of say on our mobile phones there are up to 60 elements from the earth on our mobile oh, phones my goodness. it shows some of the ores of these elements in the kitchen everything you have in your kitchen from the washing machine from the the, the building of the washing machine but also from the washing the washing powder that you put in your washing machine that all comes or has part of it coming from the earth our beautiful um, glassware is sand is silica is sand our ornaments uh, is, is uh, all comes from metals. Our fuel, so far, is in the past has all come from the earth. Well, but I'm, nowadays, I'm, our our uh, wind farms. Oh need yes, metals. yes, also. Well, uh, Siobhan, Dr. Siobhan Parr um, of the Geological uh, Survey of Ireland, I really appreciate you coming on, and I'm going to kidnap you sometime to come <laughs> back shortly uh, to come back because I'm absolutely fascinated. Uh, our time has run up, and I am so grateful that you came on this morning, and I will be in touch very, very shortly. But thank Good. you for taking so much time out of your busy day. And, and to your department and everyone else and to all the museum in Collins Barg up Sorry. beside Houston Station that's, that's where the where exhibition is so Siobhan thank you from Near FM and I know the staff and I are, are thrilled so have a good day and many many thanks